Good morning, good morning, good morning, good evening to everyone. It's my great honor to be talking to you again today. And to start with it, let us welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Father God in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this so good day, for this so blessed day, Lord, that we, ha we have right now, oh God. We just acknowledge your presence. Father God, we just acknowledge, Lord, the abundance of of blessings that you have given us lord thank you lord for the presence lord of the holy spirit who will inspire us and guide us and lead us as we study your words jesus thank you lord for that blood of cleansing forgive us lord from all the filthiness that is in our hearts now that is in our minds now cleanse us lord with your precious blood and thank you lord for the healing for those stripes lord that brought healing lord upon us ourselves upon our sicknesses and i pray lord for all those people for all the sisters and brothers lord who are with me right now oh god that you will just bless their hearts lord tremendously oh god with peace and harmony that they cannot contain this all i pray in jesus name amen oh guys our topic is still is in the book of romans and now we will be studying the righteous God or the righteous judge who is God. Okay, to warm up, can you share or just think or maybe share with somebody who is with uh, nearby you now an instance where you extended your patience? You have extended your patience. You are so angry, you are so mad. But you have, you have to have that patience. And you extended that patience to that person. What happened? <laughs> okay. Amen. Okay, the word for today is found in Romans 2, verses 3 to 4. This is actually a continuation of the unrighteousness that we just uh, studied last time. And the verse says, Do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourselves, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience that knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance I will continue to Romans 2 verses 1 to 6 therefore you are inexcusable O man whoever you are who judge for in whatever you judge another you condemn yourself for you who judge practice the same thing but we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God lead you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up to yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to its one according to his deeds. Great words. This is again for us. But before we proceed, can we define what is the meaning of forbearance? Forbearance is, the, the simple term for this is self-control. Do we have self-control when you're facing some trials, some unwanted incident in our life that we will burst into uh, anger? Impenitent, the next word is impenitent. This is not a good feeling because this is, not you being regretful about the action you did so it's being ungrateful you don't mind you feel you feel nothing you feel no shame 
that is impenitent. In this passage, Paul was addressing two groups of people, the Gentiles and the Jews. The first was a group of blatant sinners who continued doing evil, even when they knew God's command. The second was a group of self-righteous Jews who judged others for sinning, yet they themselves were discreetly doing the same. Both groups persisted in sin because they thought that they could get away with it. The truth is, no one can escape the judgment of God. In spite of this, God, through the gospel, gives the gift of righteousness to those who believe. Wow. Question. What does it mean when we, when we say that God is a judge? And what is, how do you define or what is your feeling when you will say judge or you will be in front of a judge or you will be receiving judgment? How does it feel? Diba nakaka? stressful your anxiety is maybe over your head you you cannot siguro oh my judgment will be tomorrow ano kayang judgment will i be guilty or not guilty or kung ikaw yung magbibigay ng judge judgment how does it feel am i going to give the rightful judgment to judge this person Diba? The anxiety when you, when you hear the word judge, in both the, the giver and the receiver, it's so stressful. I don't, think, I, I don't think you can sleep with it. When you will be facing a judge or you will be giving judgment. But see in here, what does it mean when you say that God is a judge? What kind of judge is God? Will you agree with me when I say that God is a fair judge? I hope so. I hope so. Number one, God is a thorough judge. In Romans 1, chapter 1, verses, 1, verses 2 to 3, it says, We know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O oh man... You who judge those who practice such things and yet do themselves yourself, what you will escape that you will escape the judgment of God? Wow. Paul said, said remember, okay, Paul is the one who is right, who is uh, who is inspired to write. Uh, I mean, yeah, to, to write the book of Romans, though he is not, he wasn't the one who is ascribing, but there to us. Paul said that there will be a day when all people will be judged according to what they have done. According to what they have done, good or bad, you will be judged. It's not only the blatant sinner who will be judged, but also those that appear righteous. God will judge our actions, words, motives, did I say action? Deeds and thoughts. In Matthew 12, I will read this one. In Matthew 12, chapter 12, verses 36 to 37, it says, But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Wow. I was reminded, uh, well, I've shared, there was a lot of sharing about this statement or expression, a phrase of expression says, Oh, just go! Oh my God! Oh, Jesus! I apu juice! Are we using the name of the Lord in vain? 
or are we using the name of the Lord when we are in despair? In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, God says about how God will judge people in the last days. And I will read. Not everyone who says to me, to me, God said, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I don't know you. Depart from me, you who practice lowliness. Wow. This is gospel. And Jesus, the one talking. Lord, 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 Have, did I not do this? Did I not do that? Did I not go do these good things and that thing and that whatever thing? And yet, I don't know you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Next, God is a patient judge. So that is the kind of God who judges thoroughly. The next one is God is a patient judge. Do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the rich, rich, riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance, but because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. And that is in Romans 2, 3, 5 again. Paul warned that just because God was not yet punishing them, see, in here, since we are doing right but low, less, or wrong, which is already low, less, God isn't yet punishing us this time. It did not mean they could get away with the wrongdoings. So it did not mean that we can get away from our wrongdoings. Neither did it mean that what we are doing are acceptable to God. Paul said that God was patient and kind to them in spite of their sin because he was giving them time to repent. Diba? Diba ano sabi niya dito? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up. Oh, no, 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 no. Because knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. Are we taking that as an advantage in our part to repent from our sins? When Jesus said in John 12, 46, John 12, 47, 48, when he said that the reason why I came to the earth was not to judge, but to save it. However, he wants that there will be, there will be definitely be a day of judgment. Diba? May warning pa din dun eh. Jesus came not to judge the world, but to save it. But he, he, Jesus gave a lot of warnings. Ano yung isa sa mga warnings niya? Simply, I will just say, review your Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments. And that is just a few of the lists given. 
'di ba? At doon may mga warning tayo. Do not just believe. Have faith. Yun nga wala mawawalan ka nga lang ng faith is already a sin. 'Di ba? How have you experienced the loving kindness and patience of God? I will speak for myself. Through my stubbornness in obeying his kingdom call, God continued to haunt me until I have no way to turn, turn to but to surrender. Ano yung stubbornness ko? I've been sharing this. There was already a call for me to work for the kingdom. Maybe that was the year of 1985-86-87 that I was called for the kingdom. But I said, I have a family, God. I have a family. It became that my priority that time was my family. But it did not even get out from my mind that I have to serve God in any way. Or I have to praise God in any way. I can. It did not skip into my mind that I have God over me. There is a God over me. There is a God over my family. Until he fulfilled all what he has promised me. To the thing that we made, we made some sort of covenant, and it was done perfectly. And then I have no reason at all not to do the kingdom call. Number three, God is a righteous God. Romans two five to six. But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will render to each one according to his work. Again, Paul said that on judgment day, God's righteous judgment will be revealed on the judgment day. He will judge both those who have received the law and those who do not have an extensive knowledge of the law. He will reward or punish people according to their works. But because we all fall short of God's standards, we are not deserving of His eternal reward. Even though God is a judge, He is also compassionate towards us and knows how much we need to be saved. This is why he sent Jesus Christ so that those who put their faith in him will be considered righteous. Wow! This is an unspeakable reward. In order for us to be righteous in the eyes of God, we must stop storing hatred, anger, and forgiveness, etc., 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 for impenitent will file up within us waiting for the judgment day to be discharged upon us or boomerang to us. As we continue to treasure up wrath, the guilt, the guilt is accumulated little by little by little and the punishment will be poured out to us one time. It's just like an overwhelming tide that we cannot contain. The worst is we cannot bribe God. Is it not? We cannot even bribe God. Iniisip pa lang natin or iisipin pa lang natin. Alam na niya. Because we are the product of Jeremiah 1.5. That before we were formed, he already knows the details of ourselves. Alam niya nung magiging end natin. 
So how, how did Jesus make us righteous? In Corinthians 2, 521, it says, For he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So there is no other way. Written or stipulated of any other way for us to be righteous. It was through Jesus. The Jesus who is sinless became sinful because of God. So we can come into the righteousness of God. This is an assertion of an absolute sinless Jesus. And there comes the paradox of redemption. In reference of Jesus as sinless to sinful because of us is found in Galatians 3.13 that says, Jesus was made a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. Again, Jesus was made a curse for us. Romans 8.3 Jesus was being made in the like of sinful flesh. So then we become righteous with God. In Romans 3, 21 to 22, But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believes. For there is no difference. See? Believes. Believes. That's the key word. Ideally and objectively is God's action by giving Jesus. That's the objective. That's the ideal thing that God did. Actually and subjectively is by the act of faith. And that is us. Do we accept it? Do we believe it? Do we receive it? Believing is a subjective act of faith. In 2 Peter 1.4, it says, By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through, through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. This sinful world is so full of lusts. Lust of the flesh, lust of the mind, lust of the heart, lust of the eyes, lust of the ears, yung mga risol, lust of the, the, the tongue that is all with F and whatever, P or whatever. Our word says, do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead us to repentance? We condemn we condemned others of the wrong wrong deeds. But did we see ours? Can we take this advantage? Or can we, yeah, can we take advantage of the offer of forgiveness and redemption by repenting from our wrong things? The love of God is His kindness to sacrifice one and single human life of His own only begotten son Jesus and yet we have the guts to have him wait until the time that we have no one to turn to ultimately but to him to God because of God's kindness we kept on rejecting the offer of redemption 
Paul was so specific that the subject of God's judgment is for the Jews and the Gentiles. No one is spared of the judgment. In verse 11, it says, For there is no partiality with God. In verse 12 to 16, it says, For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For no other hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. But when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature, uh, that's the thing in the law. This, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. Who shows the work of the law written in their hearts? Their conscience also bearing witness and between themselves, their thought accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. What, what is our advantage being Gentiles? Let us put this way. The Jews practices what is written in the law, in their law. Whatever is in their law, that is supposed to be done. That is supposed to be accomplished by them. That is their warning. Right? So they know the law but yet they do the otherwise for us gentiles we have no law before the law was just open to us now and those are four warnings for us to live right for supposed to be but yet we ourselves cannot accomplish perfectly no one can perfect the law if the Jews can't what more for us Gentiles right we do the same the only difference is us Gentiles though accordingly we are not covered by the law we have another convictor or convictor in our in ourselves which is our conscience that is giving us the direction that you did the wrong way you are not supposed to do that you have to do this and that instead it is the conscience that is bringing us to repentance it's not the law With that, to close, do we have something in our hearts that we try to tolerate? Something that gives us or brings sin to us? What is that thought or motives that we are storing in our hearts? Remember, our God is a judge God. Our God is a fair judge. Can we change? If it's so hard for us to change, the Holy Spirit is there waiting for you to call on Him so you can have, shall I say, radical change. For we know that Jesus did not come to judge the earth, but to save the sinful. With that, I will close in prayer. Thank you, Father God, for being so patient and kind in spite of our sins. I pray that your kindness will make a way for God 
to get into repentance and to dislike sin instead make us love you and obey you and I pray that we will grow in fear of you Lord and you will be pleased with our lives for you are the righteous judge and when that judgment day will come allow me to be judged accordingly rightly and to be judged to be with you in paradise or in your kingdom I also pray that give me a heart to share your words and I ask you God to open their hearts to accept you Jesus as their Lord and Savior and that they will be filled with the presence of your Holy Spirit this is my prayer in your name For those who are wanting to live in the kingdom, this is a simple word, but please put it in your hearts. Father God in heaven, I acknowledge my sinfulness. I acknowledge that I will be judged according to what, what I did. I acknowledge that if I'm doing wrong, reveal to me Feel to me the right thing to do. I ask of you, Jesus, to give me a humble heart to accept you as my Lord and Savior and be rightful in the eyes of your Father. Holy Spirit, come to me. Lead me. Direct my way. Bless my life and my family as I walk with you, in Jesus' name, amen. People of God, thank you for listening. God bless, and I love you.